my name is Steve. Welcome to my shop and Shark Bits edition number 38. In this edition of Shark Bits, I've got quite a bit to cover. I've got uh, several pieces of viewer mail, some gifts that have come in, a couple of purchases, and the machine work for this particular Shark Bits episode is to repair the drawbar for my Atlas 10F lathe. Those that follow me on uh, my last edition of Shark Bits, uh, number 37, I was making a drawbar for the 10F lathe to install the ER40 chuck that I had gotten. And if you remember, as I was threading the drawbar, it slipped in the collet. And of course, it fouled up my thread engagement and made a mess. I have since repaired the threads and I got that all straightened out. But I started investigating and I found out what the problem was. The drawbar only had about a quarter of an inch of threads on the inside of it. It's inside threads and the collet threads into it. And the collet has about a half inch of threads. And what was happening, the way the spacer was set up, the threads in the drawbar were bottoming out before the collet was completely tight. So in this edition of Shark Bits, I cut a quarter of an inch off the drawbar, which removed the threads. I bored it out and re-threaded it for, it's an odd size, it actually measures about 630 thousandths. Uh, it's, it's oversized for 5 8 but it's a 26 thread count. So I calculated out the dimensions, I bored it, and I did a half inch worth of threads in the drawbar. I didn't do any narration during the filming of that machining. I'm just going to show clips of it as we go through this uh, Shark Bits edition. But what I did do is forgot to turn the camera on when I was cutting the threads. So the only thread cutting that I have was the last shot where I actually just was doing a spring pass on the threads. I also had to cut off a spacer and I've got footage of that. That necessitated me actually setting up my old Atlas 618 lathe. I've been threatening to do it ever since I swapped it out for the 10F. And I've got it set up on my other workbench and working great. That way I didn't have to break down the setup on the 10F and, and work back and forth. It was nice having the two lathes. So we've got a lot to cover. So let's get started. The first viewer mail that I've got to share with you is from Chuck Bomarito, Outside Screwball. And Chuck and I did a little bit of an exchange and he sent me a 3D printed tray that fits the small size precision ground flat stones that I grind up. That fits beautiful. I didn't have anything. That, that'll work out real nice. So, uh, 
I really appreciate that. He sent me a couple of his stickers. He's got a couple of different variations of stickers. And he printed up a set of soft jaws for my Wilton Vice. And they've got some V grooves in them for holding round stock and odd shaped sizes. And I'll take them over to the vise and show you a close up of that. And although he does not sell these any longer, he did send me one of the last screwy balls that he had. And I really appreciate that. That'll come in handy on doing some setups on my milling machine so thank you Chuck so here are the vice jaws the soft jaws that Chuck sent to me and they fit real nice I think they'll come in real handy this next gift that I got is from Everett and Everett has a YouTube channel and I'll include a link to his channel although if you follow me you probably follow him also and he sent me an email and he said he had picked up this collection of railroad pictures and he wanted to know if I would be interested in them and they're mostly all Canadian lines however Canadian Railroads do come into uh, New Jersey, into our rail yards and so on. And it's very interesting. So I've, I've gone through most of them and I really appreciate it. I'm going to put these in my Model Railroad Club library. So thank you, Everett. This next lot that I have is from one of my subscribers and frequent contributor to my shop. His name is Andy. Andy has got a YouTube channel. He hasn't posted any videos yet. He keeps threatening. And as soon as he posts some video, I'll include a link to his channel also. But in this last lot that he sent me uh, was a group of abrasive stones. These will come in very handy. Uh, there's some nice sizes and they'll work real nice for dressing and uh, tool bits and places that I, I wouldn't be using the precision ground flat stones. The various this one's fairly coarse most of these are marked base state which happens to be a, a pretty good manufacturer some very fine these are very fine and say some different sizes and different grits than I've got so that'll be a nice addition to my abrasive stone collection This next lot, also from Andy, uh, is some more tooling, the number 9 brown and sharp taper, which is what my new horizontal milling machine takes. And he has been purchasing some lots from uh, an auction house. And as he goes through it, when he finds the number 9 brown and sharp taper tooling he sends it along to me 
This is a real nice Jacob's Chuck. It is a number 34 Jacob's Chuck. Appears to be in pretty good condition. The uh, jaws are, are pretty good. They're not too worn. So that'll come in real handy. Here is a boring fixture, a boring head. That'll come in real handy. And this is a collet adapter. It's a number nine and it's got a small collet in it. Okay, this is the collet. I'm gonna have to do some research on it. See if I can figure out what it is. It looks like it's a nice little arrangement for holding small work. It's got a single slit in it and it looks like it wouldn't be too difficult to make. So if I can't find any I may make a few as I need them. As I was going through the box to set out the next lot I found a couple more collets that go along with that. So that'll they'll be handy. Okay, this next lot from Andy is some hold down parts. You can never have too much set up and hold down hardware. A couple of nice heavy duty straps. That actually is a, I think I have one similar to that that I have a single of. Here's a pair of smaller ones. Another small set. I have one of the regular T-nut hold down sets but more often than not when I'm setting up something I always find that I could use some additional here's some more setup blocks some nice little ones and some medium size so these will come in real handy especially now that I have the second mill so if I have something set up on one mill, I don't necessarily have to break it down to, to use the other one. So I, I really appreciate it, Andy. Thank you so much. And let's get some video going so I can get some subscribers sent your way. Thank you again, Andy. This next item is an eBay find. I have been expanding my micrometer collection since I got the larger lathe. Even when I had my automotive machine shop, I think that the largest micrometer that I had in that was probably a five to six inch. Rarely ever used anything any larger. Um, most of the automotive engines and so on that I did were uh, certainly no larger than a 5-inch bore. Some of the diesels might have been as big as a 6. 
and certainly none of the crankshafts that I ever ground were any larger than about a four inch journal at, at very maximum. So I didn't really have too much large uh, tooling. So this is a Brown and Sharp 8 to 9. So that expands my micrometer collection up to 9 inch. Comes with an 8 inch standard in this nice box. It's got carbide faces on it that are in perfect condition. Usually a micrometer this large doesn't get used that often. So they're very, very often they're, they're like new. It was listed with a buy it now, make an offer. And I made an offer and they accepted it. This is a nice box. It's going to necessitate me reorganizing my micrometer drawer. It's a nice addition to the shop. Now that worked out a little bit better than I expected. They all fit. This next item is another eBay find. Tom Lipton showed one of these a while ago on his channel. And it's something that I have been considering trying to make. And what it is, it's a gauge block stone. And, of course, any of you that do follow me know that I, I grind the precision ground flat stones. And I had picked up a set of, actually two sets, of used gauge blocks. I have a, a good complete set that I use for my uh, accurate work. But these sets I picked up, I just wanted to have something to use for setups and so on. And this, this is what I ended up with uh, out of two partial sets. I've got almost a complete set. And most of these are actually very good. They're brand name Made in USA gauge blocks. But some of them are in pretty rough shape. So I considered looking into a gauge block stone and I found this one on eBay and I suspect that the person that had it listed didn't really know what it was because I got it pretty cheap on a buy it now and the gauge block stone can be used to refinish your gauge blocks without removing any material from them and as you rub them on the gauge block, they actually, when they get down to a nice fine finish, they actually almost ring to the gauge block. Now most of these gauge blocks that were in this set, they were a little dirty. And I haven't touched most of them. But after using them on the stone. Let's see if they'll ring together. Yeah. So I've got, I'm going to go through this set of gauge blocks and, and refinish them. I say when I, I purchased the set, I didn't really purchase it to use as a set of standards. I used I bought it really for the material and uh, I say I, I do use it every once in a while if I need a shim for a setup or so on. So one more item added to my arsenal of precision tools. The instructions on it say basically to rub it until it rings to the block and that's exactly what's happening as as you go and it cleans up it actually rings to the block and I have measured them with a, as precision a measurement tool that I have and you can rub them on this block all day long and they aren't going to change any dimension
Okay, this next item is to solve an organizational problem. For a long time, I probably only had eight to ten reamers, and I just kept them in one of my machinist toolbox. I could lay them out in the drawer in order, and it was never a problem. But over the years, and getting some lots of tools and having to buy additional reamers for projects and so on, I've got a mess. And the other day I went looking for a reamer and I think I spent probably 15-20 minutes looking for a reamer that I couldn't find and I decided I had to do something about it. So I ordered in a reamer index. And this got a couple of reamers in here. I actually purchased them because I didn't have them and I stuck them in there as soon as I bought them. But I'm going to sort through these reamers, put the best of the best in the index, and I'll bring you back when I'm finished. Well, that was a bit of a surprise. I have a lot of duplications. I also have some over and undersized reamers, which is good to know. I'm going to sort them out again later. But now at least I know what I've got. I've got some larger sizes also that don't fit in here. But I know what I need to fill it in. Well, that's going to wrap up this edition of Shark Bits. I hope you've enjoyed it. I want to give a shout out and thank again uh, Chuck Bomarito outside Screwball. Everett from Everett's Machine Shop and Andy for their gifts. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. I'll see you in the next video.